please welcome uh, Claudia uh, Washer. Uh, she's an associate professor in behavioral uh, biology at Anglia Ruskin University. Uh, and her research interests are in social cognition and physiology and vocal communication. Um, so welcome, Claudia. Good. Thank you very much sharing my screen and also hoping that it will share the the noise and voice uh, in this presentation. Um, thank you very much for having me. I'm going to present today a project we are planning for next uh, spring. Um, so I have no data uh, to show for you, but I'm having a quite uh, elaborate uh, and final plan of what we are uh, planning to do um, and hoping to find. So we are looking at bioacoustic monitoring in red-billed chuffs, which are a species of corvids. And during this great workshop, we've already heard uh, quite a number of time about the challenges uh, to assess individual welfare states in animals. In my past life, during my PhD, I've worked quite a bit on uh, social physiology, and I looked at emotional arousal in animal. And one massive ch challenge by looking at physiological uh, measures of uh, emotional arousal, obviously, is that we can only assess arousal on the, the low to high axis, and it's really, really difficult um, to actually assess uh, the valence, so whether an animal has a positive or a negative experience. Uh, which is really um, quite a huge uh, issue when we want to know about welfare states of animals and whether an animal perceives a situation as um, negative or positive. Now, I think in, during the workshop, we've already touched a couple of times that one potential um, uh, good measure of emotional arousal and valence could potentially be the voice of animals and indicators in vocalizations. So this is a graph from a study from Elodie Briefer, who did quite a lot of work uh, in these areas. So in the pictures, you see spectrograms of horses. So those are vocalizations of horses. And uh, what you see in the top panel, basically, are two vocalizations in a negative context. So this is when the comp companion leaves an individual. And in the lower uh, row, you see two vocalizations in a positive context, so when this companion uh, returns. And when you look at these spectrograms uh, in detail, um, they do actually differ uh, statistically. So whoever is uh, familiar with reading these kind of spectrograms, one thing uh, you can already see is the top two vocalizations are shorter in duration. So in horses and a lot of farm animals, uh, vocalizations elicited in a negative context are shorter. Uh, and also other acoustic parameters. And these are all the um, uh, uh, red errors indicated in this figure. So this indicates vocal characteristics, such as the mean fundamental frequency or minimum uh, fundamental frequencies and different harmonics. And these characteristics also differ uh, depending on the context of the vocalizations. And this is something which is fairly well established uh, in farm animals or generally domestic animals. And there are quite a lot of studies now also starting to suggest really automated recording and machine learning was already mentioned, which would allow us to assess the welfare states of individuals. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Generally, um, now I said already a lot of domestic animals and captive animals, not so much uh, into the wild. So what we are planning to do in our project really is to take this approach uh, into the wild and try to validate passive acoustic uh, monitoring to assess welfare in a, a reintroduced population of red-billed chuffs. So passive acoustic monitoring 
really means that you put a recorder somewhere, have um, acoustic communication, vocalizations of animals recorded, and from these recordings you try to automatically assess uh, the welfare states of individuals. Now we are far, far away from this in wild animals, but we really attempt a first validation in this specific population of chuffs. And what we will need to do, um, uh, yeah, in order to do so, we also take behavioral measures, which I will get to in a second. And the parameters we are interested in, on the one hand, are acoustic parameters, and I've already mentioned our fundamental frequency is often used. However, another thing which might be quite promising to do is to really look at the occurrence of certain call types. So really to look into different positive and negative contexts and look how frequently the birds actually emit um, types of vocalizations. So we will um, conduct this study in Jersey. Um, they have a reintroduced population of red-billed chuffs. Um, they started a release project in 2013. And one big advantage for us uh, is that the release project, the chuffs are closely monitored. So we know fairly well how many animals there are around, where they are on the island and what's happening to them. Um, they are individually marked or most of them are individually marked with color bands. And um, they are also supported with supplementary food, which we hope we will be able to utilize uh, in our study also to, to create almost opportunistic areas of uh, positive uh, welfare. So the first part of the uh, study will be passive acoustic monitoring. So all over the study area, we will actually deploy these uh, little uh, acoustic re uh, recorders people might be familiar with. The big advantage, these kind of recorders in the past really become quite cheap to purchase. So we actually have a, a big number of recorders uh, available to us now, and we can collect huge amount of data with this. So we really plan to cover a broad area of habitat of these chuffs and uh, passively acoustic uh, yeah, record their vocalizations and how they actually move in the landscape. The second part of the study is really active acoustic monitoring. So we plan to follow the animals to record their behavior and their vocalizations. And we hope to be able to opportunistically record uh, events um, which are expected to elicit poor welfare versus uh, uh, good welfare. So examples here are anthropogenic disturbance. So we will have areas where we have uh, humans um, disrupting the animals. We also have uh, uh, active quarry sites there where we hope uh, it will be relatively noisy, which might affect the welfare of the animals. However, we also want to go into really um, events which we expect to elicit positive welfare, such as resting or affiliative uh, behaviors. And then we plan to compare the vocal behavior, as I've already said, characteristics of, of call types, uh, but we also plan to go into no so-called nonlinear phenomena, which again in domestic animals have already been described as quite good indicators of uh, welfare. I don't have results for you today, I've already mentioned that, but I have a couple of expected results uh, and examples for you. So here are a couple of calls of these red-billed chuffs. So these calls are from uh, public repositories, Xenokantu. The first type of course, so these first three calls are calls um, expected in a more neutral uh, context. So those are what's usually described as uh, contact calls in red-billed chuffs. Good. And the second set of recordings is, and I'm just going from the comments on Xenocanto here, so I have to rely on uh, the humans observer, but these calls have been described as uh, alarm contexts. Good. 
but you probably as observer can already tell so even for an inexperienced observer these two types of calls really differ they also look different uh, on the on the spectrograms so i So I have a couple of uh, preliminary, very preliminary results from Karen Cross, another species of COVID, which I've used to work uh, quite a lot in the aviary. So also here we have different call types in different uh, contexts, and we did something very similar in the aviary compared to what we are planning to do now on the wild chuffs. Uh, watching their behavior, recording vocalizations and behavior at the same time. And again, I have two sets of examples of calls for you. Uh, first of all, the, the, the uh, more relaxed situation, so relatively unaroused. Okay, sorry, so this was chaotic. This was playing... Uh, not in the right order, I'm trying it again. Uh, so the first example. So this is a very common uh, example of car calls, which many of you will recognize. And now the examples of the more aroused situation. So on this first set of examples and different calls, we have already looked at different acoustic parameters. And here in the first graph, you see the duration of the calls. So you've, we find the uh, calls emitted in more of alarm calls to be longer compared to calls emitted in a non-alarm context. And the second example is the mean dominant frequency. And also here we do already find a significant difference in these called correct, call characteristics in a uh, captive animal. So we hope to be able to find something very similar in the chuffs in the world. So just to summarize, we plan to uh, validate uh, passive acoustic monitoring to assess emotional arousal in the red, red belt chuffs. We are planning to look at uh, vocal characteristics, but also the type of calls um, uh, emit by the animals and we also plan to look quite opportunistically because of course we are working on, on wild animals so we have uh, ethical restrictions in ter terms of what kind of manipulations we can do so we will look at opportunistic positive situations versus situations actually uh, expecting to more negatively affect uh, animal welfare. So with this, uh, thank you very much for your attention. I would like to thank Sam Reynolds, which is my PhD student uh, involved in this project and in charge of this project. And of course, uh, very much thanks to the Wild Animal, Animal Initiative for funding the project and for inviting me to speak today.